this is my new favorite thing. I found like these 23 videos that someone put together in a playlist of just remixes of uh, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air theme song with Sonic the Hedgehog levels. And it's like not only incredibly like why? But, you know, the fact is, I think the interesting thing is there's 23 of them. A lot of them have tons of views. It adds up to about an hour of content that, like, people had to make, you know. It took time. Um, and also, I took this random screenshot yesterday on the train as I was throwing this together, and it was last updated 43 seconds before I took the screenshot. And so that represents that, like, an incredible amount of manpower is going into making these things. Um, so the energy and the drive to create things for the community is definitely there. You know, it's, it's a community that loves to sort of interact with itself. Um, so the number three lesson comes out of uh, doing RaffleCon specifically. Um, this RaffleCon 2, we had a, a beverage sponsor, Vitamin Water, and RaffleCon 1, we had a beverage sponsor also, uh, Brondo. They did exactly the same thing. They brought their products. Um, they didn't give us any money. They just gave out their products for free. Um, and we noticed something very interestingly different between the, the two experiences. So, you know, for vitamin water, it was definitely popular because it's the free drink available at the conference and people like vitamin water. So it was consumed in large, large amounts. You could find these bottles everywhere. Um, so sort of as a viral marketing campaign that worked. But if you go on Flickr, for example, and you type in vitamin water RaffleCon, the only things you get are from the vitamin water Flickr account of like random speakers with a bottle of smart water in, in front of them, you know, which is not as good of a result when it comes to viral marketing. Now the first year we had Brondo, and, and granted Brondo is a product that came out of uh, Idiocracy, this movie, so it already sort of had a backstory. It's kind of a ludicrous drink. It's supposed to be an exaggerated version of Gatorade. So the, the, um, the slogan is the thirst mutilator, and in the movie, uh, the, everyone is watering plants with it because they, they've managed to convince people that like electrolytes is everything that plants need. Um, but Brando was also very smart. They took an existing uh, meme on the internet, which was this power thirst video, also mocking Gatorade and that type of power drink where this Bron, like manly man who turns out to be a very meek Canadian guy um, is, is grunting things about how this power drink will make, you, uh, make your babies run like Kenyans. Um, and they parodied that and they actually got the guy to do a voiceover for their own campaign which features images like this, which our audience can relate to. <laughs> this is a man shaving his chest with a lawnmower in case you didn't see. Um, and so as a result, when Brando was at RaffleCon, uh, people engaged with the brand in a way that you know we couldn't have expected, we didn't promote, um, and Brando, I don't think, could have expected beyond their wildest dreams. People started pouring it in plants and taking pictures of it. People took themselves uh, having their tongues turned yellow because it's kind of, I don't know if it's EPA approved, this liquid. Um, but, but you know, if you look at, if you type in Brando, I didn't even type in RaffleCon, just Brando into uh, Flickr, you see all these images, a lot of these were taken at RaffleCon because people were excited about this product, they understood the backstory behind it, they connected to it, and it was funny to them. And therefore, gen making content with it was interesting. So I just thought that that was an interesting sort of case-by-case uh, -case comparison. Um, another thing that we noticed was interesting is uh, a lot of the the memes that we've invited to RaffleCon uh, get sponsored, but the ones that are really successful uh, in the end is when the company hires not the joke, but the people who make the joke, which makes sense, right? Like what you're hiring is not uh, one specific joke because you have then have the danger of, uh, oh, people will think that your joke is coming too late or they'll feel like their content's been reappropriated. But if you actually hire the people who make the interesting content, then that gets you their like, you know, built-in audience, and uh, it, it gets you their sort of unquantifiable ability to tap into what people are interested in. So two good examples of this are, you know, Leroy Jenkins, who's a famous World of Warcraft meme, uh, basically for messing up. <laughs> he messes up in a very spectacular way. But on the top there, he's being invited to speak at uh, BlizzardCon. Um, so he's now sort of, the Bl Blizzard has uh, used him as like sort of a PR person for them. And you know, he wins and they win. And the second one, uh, Red versus Blue, which is a machinima show uh, based on Halo. Uh, 
Halo has actually, you know, it was started as an unauthorized thing where they were making these movies using the Halo engine. Uh, but then now Bungie actually hires the Red vs. Blue guys uh, to make commercials for them because they have such a successful following. It's the only, I think, web TV show with uh, DVD sales in the hundreds of thousands. Yeah, and you know, let them make the decisions. You know, we, we've also seen cases where people have hired the, the talent and then not given them creative control and that just crashes and burns. And sort of the last thing, and I think the most important point, is when you're dealing with the internet, don't expect to not be trolled. Trolling is when people sort of, you know, haze you. Uh, this is unstoppable. <laughs> it's just completely, like, you can't prevent it. But at the same time, it's also completely neutral. So it's a platform, really. <laughs> um, for example, uh, this is a very famous thing that just happened less than a month ago. Uh, people, who, Activision, which makes the video game Call of Duty, noticed that a lot of 4chan people were making fun of Call of Duty, and that might have been one of the reasons for why it didn't sell as well. So a very well-meaning Activision sales representative um, posted this lovely note on top that says, you know, we don't understand why you don't like it, we added this party mode, could you just tell us what's wrong? And I think in traditional marketing terms, that's seen as a good move, like you're engaging with the audience, that's great. Oh wait, your audience is crazy. Um, so what happened, and this is again a screenshot from something that's much, much longer, the first person posts back, sort of as a joke, there were no dinosaurs. Every single comment in this thread for, for like a whole day involves why there aren't dinosaurs. So like you can see, dinosaurs are a big selling point to games these days, I agree. It lacked dinosaurs, no dinosaurs. Mario games have dinosaurs, Call of Duty doesn't. That sums it up for you, Activision. A lack of velociraptors. Later on, there were po people who were like, oh, I thought this game had dinosaurs, but now, I, now that I've heard they don't, I'm not gonna buy it. <laughs> But it, it just went, it was amazing to see hundreds of people who didn't know each other, hadn't planned this, just see this thread going and keep it going. And the momentum is crazy. And as a result, Activision, you know, just threw their hands up. If I were them, I would put dinosaurs in the next one, you know. Um, so how do you deal with this as a marketer? Or even as, you know, for us, we come from the internet, we're one of them. But, you know, they, we still knew that the trolling was inevitable. Um, so the only way you can do this is to sort of be like Bruce Lee Kitty here um, and, and you have to like redirect the force back at them. <laughs> so the only way that you can feed the trolls um, is with more trolling. So here's an example of uh, 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 this group of anonymous people from 4chan always come to all the RaffleCon events and their, their intent is always to like troll the crap out of us and scare us and whatever. And you know, they're like little boys, so we're not that scared. But um, for the first RaffleCon, they stormed the stage with this boom box and like try to do this little dance to throw things, you know, off the rails. Um, but luckily for us, we had a panel with uh, Randall Monroe, again, of XKCD, and uh, several other people who were much more popular on the internet than these jokers were. And so Randall Monroe drew, <laughs> drew a comic of them failing and then wrote, that sucked. And that worked so well. I mean, we didn't have to do anything. <laughs> they pretty much just sort of like put their heads down and <laughs> went back into the seats. And you know, for future RaffleCon events, we've done things like we put Leroy Jenkins, who is someone who's very famous on the internet for being a, a crazy aggressive person, basically. We had him do our security. He's actually a very nice guy. Um, but you know, that makes the trolls say like, we understand where you are, and the rest of the people watching it, instead of thinking, oh, these trolls are being funny, we're gonna jump in on what they're doing, they sort of think, like, awesome, come back, right? And then they're on your side. So, that's how you win. Alexis? <laughs> Laptop swap. So I've got a couple. This, this segue is really nice because if there's a lesson that I, I hope you all have learned by now, it's that unfortunately, although everyone wants to make some huge organic thing, you can't actually create organic because that's against the definition of something that is organic. Fine, all right, we'll live with that. But you want to be ready for all those opportunities uh, because presumably there are brands out there who can seize these kinds of moments when that random internet zeitgeist is saying, you know, put more dinosaurs in the next game. Uh, one, at least two examples of mine that are my favorite ones from Reddit's history that both happened in this past year are actually fairly do-goodery, so bear with me here. Um, lots of money is involved though, so it has that going for it. <laughs> so you may have heard Earthquake in Haiti, uh, really awful situation there. The entire Reddit front page was covered with stories about what was going on and, and effective ways to help. 
Um, we, we basically ripped off Google in, in the way that they changed their logos for holidays and other random events. Um, so we changed our logo. Okay, great. What a small, pretty worthless thing to do. Um, but the Reddit community kept going. The Reddit community actually started talking about, you know, what's a really efficient way to give money? When I give a dollar to some organization in Haiti, how much of that money is actually going to help people? How much of it is paying for overhead? How much of it is paying for cocaine? Who knows? Uh, and they did a little bit of research. In fact, well, they did a lot of research, and they started getting together and, and figuring out, you know, if we really want to help and do it efficiently and effectively, you know, we should find organizations that believe in that kind of transparency and that kind of accountability. And they found one in Direct Relief. So we contacted them. And we said, hey, Direct Relief, would it be cool if, if we did this big uh, fundraising push with you guys? If you're willing to go a little, little extra mile, go a little harder, and provide the Reddit community with a little bit more feedback as to where their money is going, I bet they'll, I bet they'll you know, really turn out the numbers. Um, we actually had volunteers from the organization come and do an Ask Me Anything interview, where Reddit basically pulls, uh, any, pulls questions from the community, and they vote up and down the, the best and, and worst of the questions, and we ask the top 10. And they, they did a video response. They were happy to oblige. Um, and, and the Reddit uh, community responded, and they responded really well. There was this fundraising page. We even got to use the silly rivalry with Dig to help convince our respective communities, which for all kinds of inexplicable reasons don't like each other, uh, we, to use that rivalry to kind of build more attention, more action. We threw blog entries together. We, we kept the community abreast of what was happening and where that money was going. We actually got photographs of pallets of medical supplies that had been branded with a Reddit alien, and we got photographs of them leaving California, boarding a FedEx plane somewhere in California, landing in Port-au-Prince, being taken off the plane. We, we saw the whole transition, and the whole community actually got to see that their efforts were not in vain. So the initial goal, uh, we just threw a number out there because it was the first few digits of pi, and we thought, all right, let's see if we can knock this out. Um, we actually did achieve it. That's a beer to celebrate that we achieved it. We achieved it in a few hours. And the Reddit community was like, this is great. You know, we're totally all for this. And all of a sudden, they got a little brazen. They said, let's try twice that. And, and there's some kind of math joke in there involving 2 pi that Chris explained to me later. But um, we, we actually hit that, too, and, and only in a matter of hours. And so there was a new goal, $185,000. This was the amount of money that Reddit, on its own, raised well, not really raised, gave away in the world's largest Secret Santa project. Sorry, you guys can't join up for this year's, but the Secret Santa project that's going on right now has already, has already had well more than this amount of money invested. And this is just Redditors giving random $20 gifts to random Redditors across the globe. And that's an entirely Reddit organized and run event with an entire website, redditgifts.com, that we had nothing to do with. So we, we started taunting each other between the Dig and Reddit rivalry and, and really wanted to see where this would go. And so Dig started advertising it as well. And at the end of the day, this goal was absolutely reached. In fact, let the, yeah, let's throw a kitty in there because of how awesome it was. So, so Reddit raised over $180,000. They hit their own goal. This was something that initially started as, we see where the community is going. Let's get a not-for-profit involved that has vested interest in raising a fuck ton of money for Haiti. And let's, let's ask them to do a few things for us, to go a little bit, a little bit harder, a little, do a little bit more than they would have normally done. And the end result was, it turns out, the internet is not actually 100% dickheads, as our friend Zach Weiner so wonderfully drew together. Now, this is not the first uh, fundraising event that sort of spontaneously happened on Reddit. There was another that was sort of tied into a rather famous New Yorker. You guys are hopefully all familiar with Stephen Colbert. Here he is parodying a man named Glenn Beck, who you may have heard held a rally, coincidentally, on the same day as the famous Dr. King, I Have a Dream speech in DC. It was the rally to restore honor, which I think was deliberately ironic, but I'm not sure. Um, and the Reddit community responded by saying, you know what, it would be great if Stephen Colbert held a rally of his own. And one of our users, Mr. Sam Mercer, uh, he basically put up that post one morning and it was on the front page by the next day. And all of a sudden, Reddit and the greater internet started getting really excited. And so because we let Redditors create their own communities, we let them create a Reddit if they want to talk about knitting, if they want to talk about anime, if they want to talk about football, it doesn't matter. And someone created a Reddit for the Colbert rally and they reskinned it, they restyled it. This was us just giving them the tools that they needed to do whatever they wanted with it. And Stephen responded, because the Colbert folks are really, really savvy when it comes to throwing some bones at the internet. And they saw this, and they throw up our logo, and of course, the next day, everyone's talking about it.